Okay, good morning, everyone. Good morning. Welcome to Christ the King Wilmington. The, the, did you notice the uh, sun this morning? Yeah, it's kind of nice, isn't it? So uh, we're going to, uh, let me pray, and then we're going to sing a song. I have a few announcements, uh, and then uh, we have a guest speaker today, which I'm excited about. So uh, let us pray, and then we'll sing, uh, O Come, All Ye Faithful. Father, we're thankful for this opportunity that you are uh, that to be together like this. And we just pray, Lord, that uh, you will use this time to encourage us, to uh, strengthen us. Uh, we just pray that uh, as your word is taught, Lord, that uh, that it will affect us in each of our own hearts where we have needs. Lord, uh, encourage the uh, discouraged, um, uh, exhort us to do what you want us to be and and Lord, we do ask that you would open our eyes to our own hearts and uh, that we might see uh, who, we, who we are and the attitudes that we have, that we might correct them to be like you, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So let's sing, O Come All Ye Faithful, <laughs> which is an extremely high song. It's very high. So those of you that are sopranos and high tenors, please help me. So it wasn't too bad. Uh, uh, just uh, some brief announcements. Uh, next week, we're going to have a little Christmas program uh, that Beth and I have been working on. And we're going to uh, have a little uh, devotional, then some singing, and then a devotional and, and singing based upon some Old uh, Testament prophecies. So that will be the our, our service next week. And we're going to have candle lights and and so we'll celebrate Christmas. And then two weeks from today, we will not meet here, uh, but we will. Be, I will broadcast from the uh, the ranch. And uh, I don't didn't, haven't decided what time yet. I was thinking nine, but that might be too early. Anyway, nine or ten, and I'll have a a brief uh, devotional for Christmas morning, so that you'll be able to watch with me, or you could live, or you can watch later. So that's our plan. And we're sticking to it. Next week is uh, Blessing Bags, right? Mm -hmm. And I appreciate Michelle uh, 
helping out in that area. By the way, our website is up and running. If you're interested in supporting us, uh, uh, we don't really bring it up that much, but there's a way to give. I'm, I'm happy to report that we are doing well uh, financially, and we've given a lot of money away for our, for our group uh, to help out in various uh, operations and ministries. So I'm excited about that. So any other announcements? Rita? We're good. Let's see. Well, there's a card going around for Eddie. Yeah, Eddie's card there. If you'll sign it, we appreciate it. So, yeah. and if anybody wants to contribute, we will be sending him some money. Right. Okay. Well, uh, 2011, Beth and I began to attend uh, <laughs> Elevation Church in Blanchester, and it was a really good experience for us there. And uh, one of the things that uh, I really appreciated about the pastor at the time was Craig Nisley. He let me preach every uh, five or six weeks, and that ultimately led us to uh, getting back in the ministry. And so I've always liked to let gifted people come and preach. And uh, Dan Young is certainly one of those. Uh, and uh, I really appreciate Dan uh, and his uh, uh, his uh, his insight on things. And we get together regularly for breakfast and. Uh, we talk about a lot of things, and I always appreciate what he brings to the table. And so I've, I've asked him to come and speak to us this morning. And so without further ado, my friend and brother, Dan Young. Well, thank you. Thank you, Pastor Paul. Well, top of the morning, everyone. Good morning. How's everyone doing this morning? Good. 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 Well, I'm excited to share this uh, with you this morning. It's... Um, Probably less of a sermon. Is it ready to go? Yep. It's probably less of a sermon and more of a journey. Right? This is kind of a, this, this, uh, as Paul could, could attest, this is probably several years into the making. Right? Um, so, a weasel, a little patient, and Jesus walk into a bar. Sounds like a, sounds like a joke. I don't even know, honestly, why it came up with the headline. Um, other than uh, I've got some great Baptist friends, their heads are probably exploding when they see it. But other than that, it's kind of fun. But no, there is there is a meaning behind this. So this goes back to uh, probably about 2019, I think it was, maybe it's 2020. You know, that, that, does it feel like everything has kind of blended together in the last few years? Yes. Yeah. So I think it was a few years ago where I, I call it the Great Duck Massacre of, of 2019. I think that was the year or uh, thereabouts. So to go into this. So years ago, we got these ducks, right? They're kind of the, the Aflac ducks, you know what I'm talking about? They're just these beautiful white ducks. Uh, raised them from little little babies. Got them a little duck house out by the pond uh, because ducks are very vulnerable, right? Very vulnerable. Everything is a predator to them. How are they going to protect themselves, right? But they're, they're just such fun, loving little guys. They sit around, they kind of, I call them laughing ducks because to me, it always sounds like they're laughing. And when you pull up in the driveway, they come up to greet you and they kind of put you in a good mood. It's pretty cool, right? <laughs> And love these ducks. Well, they're a little bit of high maintenance because every every morning you got to let them out of their duck house. You know, went out bought them this nice, secure little duck house. You got to let them out. And every night you got to put them, uh, get them back. And they were fairly good. Every once in a while they'd be unruly. But for the most part, they'd go back into this duck house and, and everything was good. Well, one cold morning we go out to let the ducks out. And I don't hear them quacking like an anticipation to come out. Like, what's going on? And I, I open uh, the thing to let it down. I look in there. Something got in there and got my ducks, right? And uh, a couple of them were still alive. So it wasn't bad enough. And, and, and it's not like they were torn apart. It's not like they were eaten. Okay? They were just something got in there, pried open the back, got in there and killed the, uh, one of the ducks and two of them were still living. So to add insult to injury, I had to take these ducks because they were there's no way they could be saved. Uh, we tried for about a day and realized they're just in pain. This is this can't go on. So I took the ducks out and did what I had to do. Right. So we discovered that if you if you see, okay, what what would have done this? What would have done this to these innocent ducks? It didn't use them for food, so we know it wasn't a fox or it wasn't a coyote. Well, it was a weasel. A weasel will go in and they'll kill something for no good reason, just for sport. Like they had to be strong. They had to pry this thing open go in there and then maim and kill these ducks for no reason they didn't eat it for nutrition it was kind of sport for them and i gotta tell you i, I was i was uh sad upset i was angry for a long time 
seems silly, but these were cool little ducks, right? So it made me think, we got the weasels in the world, right? There are the weasels in our life that come in and do destruction for no good reason, none at all. Does that sound fair? I think we've all had the weasels in our life. And these could be major life events, you know? For me, okay, the ducks is just one small example. The weasels get to the ducks, but what are the weasels in our life? You know, I have a dear friend of mine. I was best friends with, with, her, with her son, and I know this is so uplifting this morning. Uh, and her son uh, was killed in a car crash coming home from uh, church, right? So why, why, why do things like that happen? You know, those are the weasels of the world, and, and the, the great weasel, of course, is Satan himself. We have to remember, all the way back to Genesis, we live in a fallen world. Sometimes there just is no explanation. The weasels just come in and do it. Fair enough? The weasels are out there. We know this. So, you know, there, the weasels could be an illness in the family. The weasels could be an Ill, illness. Uh, it could be a job loss. There are a lot of major events. There are typically a few of them in our life, but they're definitely out there. Fair enough? But the interesting thing is, I think we can dismiss it and say that um, God was not involved. Well, yeah, God is involved in everything. God is the Alpha, the Omega. He is always there. He is ever present. So that we, so you could ask the question: Why does He let the weasels do this? Well, all right, we, we learn that we live in this fallen world, and we're given free will. So this is kind of the price we pay for that. The, the weasels are going to happen, and I wish I could say I've studied it. Uh, I, I wish I could say that I had some explanation as to why God lets these things, these things happen, but but He does. And, and that's, a, that's a tough thing to swallow as a believer or, you know, even as a non-believer. I think that would be kind of a difficult question to tackle. Like, why does God let this stuff happen? Like, he can snap his fingers and, and prevent it from happening. And this person I was telling about, that her, her uh, son, you and I were best friends, that uh, her son passed in a car crash. She made the point to me one day. She said, you know, sometimes someone will say, gosh, uh, <laughs> such and such was God spared him from this accident or this, that, the other thing. Well, okay, what exactly does that mean for her? How is she supposed to take that when she has lost someone? So I think we have to be cognizant of the fact that I don't know necessarily that God is protecting us and not protecting us. I don't know. As my brother says, we'll just have to wait and see God's notes on these things. There are some things we just can't answer. Fair enough. But nonetheless, the weasels of the world are out there. Now, there's a whole other class, the Lilliputians. Have any of you read uh, Gulliver's Travel? Uh, Jonathan Swift, you know, it's a couple hundred years old, classic book, but Gulliver travels to all these different islands. Gulliver finds one island and had these little Lilliputians. They're little six-inch high little buggers that have a bad attitude, arrogant as all get out, just, just annoying, but they're massive in numbers. So even though, you know, Gulliver <coughs> is a full-size person and these Lilliputians are only six inches tall, the number of them, they tackle him right to the ground, right? And they tie him down, they pin him down, and they make demands of him. So he's pretty annoyed by these little Lilliputians, and eventually he does get loose, right? But so we've got the weasels for major life events, but we also have the Lilliputians, and these are all those minor events. These are those little things that happen to us every day. It could be traffic, right? Uh, how many of you have just had a series of things, you've stubbed your toe, and tiny little things happen one, again and again and again? Those are the Lilliputians to my day. Right, and as if the weasels weren't bad enough, I believe that the Lilliputians actually do more damage to us because they're more numerous in numbers. There's more frequent events to this. So uh, you can find the Lilliputians in, in the, the news headlines, social media, they're all over the place and their goal is to tie us down. Fair enough? Well, there's good news. Because Jesus, and by the way, this is more of an accurate depiction of what they believe, uh, archaeologists believe Jesus would look like, which is kind of interesting, right? Not the blonde-haired uh, Jesus, the blue-eyed Jesus that we see. This is more of an archaeologist thing, just a little fun side note. We know that God is in control. He is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. True? Amen? Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, he gave us everything we need to accept the weasels. He gave us everything we need to forgive the weasels. You know how difficult it can be to forgive the weasels in your life? But what does Jesus tell us? How often are we supposed to forgive? 70 times 7? And what do you mean by that? Just forgive. 
is if we don't forgive the weasels, if we don't forgive the Lilliputians, they control our lives. And the awesome thing is that God gave us everything that we need to squash the weasels, or at least forgive them and get them out of our life, and, and, and shed the Lilliputians as quickly as possible and get on with our godly lives. Is that good news? Does that sound all right? It does to me. Uh, so isn't it interesting that in the scripture, it is written, do not worry, fear not. Some uh, uh, phraseology of that type, do not worry, fear not. 365 times it is written in the Bible. How's that for some cool trivia? Do you think it's an accident that there are 365 times, one for each day where Jesus is telling us, fear not, don't worry. But yeah, we do, right? Guilty is charged. So alongside, he is the ultimate gift of grace. So let's consider this. Instead of a weasel, a little fusion, and Jesus walking to a bar, what if it were a little weasel, a little fusion, and Jesus walking to your mind, right? So we're not walking into the bar, we're walking into your mind. Now, when I'm mind, I'm not talking about the physical brain, I'm talking about the mind, like our, our thinking being. Okay. So let's have a look at this. First of all, God created us in his image. We know this. Everything is energy. Energy cannot be created nor destroyed. Does that sound familiar? A little like God? Was he created? Will he be destroyed? No. God is within us. We and, and we are we are energy. Now, thoughts, thoughts become reality. So thoughts become feelings, feelings turn into actions and actions turn into results, okay? So we have to be very cautious about what we think about, what we think about all the time, right? As a man thinketh. We have to be very cautious about what we're thinking about all the time. So as Zig Ziglar would say, let's do a checkup from the neck up. <laughs> And let's examine what are our thoughts every day, right? From the time we get up to the time we go to bed, what exactly are our thoughts? Because do you realize that everything starts with a thought and becomes a reality? An example, uh, this camera, the projector, this building, all of these things started with a thought, right? All of them before they were created. The internet, everything started with a thought and they were then created. So. We have a choice. So we have the conscious mind, right? The conscious is our thinking mind. This is what we do to, to, to um, walk around, to, to make decisions. That is our conscious mind. Here's the cool thing. God has given us the ability to either believe something or not believe it in our conscious mind, right? We, can either, we have two choices, believe it or not believe it. Our subconscious mind, though, whatever you feed it, it believes. It does not know the difference between a positive or negative thought. It's been, it's been written as it's kind of like a, a farmer's field. Whereas a farmer's field, you could plant corn or you could plant the deadly poison nightshade. You water them in equal prominence, take care of them, sunshine, etc., and they both grow in equal prominence. It doesn't know the difference between good and bad. It doesn't know the difference between right or wrong. It's just a thought that you've planted in there. So what conscious thoughts are you planting in there? Right? So do you think it might be important as to what we're feeding our minds and what we're believing every day? See, that's why it's so important for us to constantly be steep, deep into scripture and to, to constantly be in prayer because prayers begin with what? Thoughts. So what are your thoughts? And the highest forms of energy, gratitude, right? Certainly gratitude. So if you begin every day and every moment, ingratitude. And these, these are habits that we get into. But if we watch, if we're constantly feeding our mind with the news, if we're constantly feeding our mind with the garbage that we see on social media, if we're constantly comparing our outside to other people's uh, inside, our inside to other people's outside that we see on social media, can that, can that be pretty dangerous? Can we accept those thoughts and think, wow, I don't stack up to any of this? And do you think that that's God's plan? I don't, right? We are creatures of God. We are perfect. And we have to remind ourselves that, and we have to steep ourselves in that. And the best way to do that that I, I have found ever is to be studying scriptures so we know exactly. I mean, look, God gave us an instruction manual. How cool is that? Actually gave us an instruction manual for the most complex thing ever created in this universe. 
right? Our physical body, our minds, very complex. God gave us a manual, but we have to read the manual. And we have to be careful of the thoughts that we put into our mind. Fair enough? So we can control the weasels by forgiving them. We have the tools to do that. The Lilliputians, we have the choice whether or not we let them control our day or, or whether we don't. What would happen if, for instance, you started your day and you did step your toe? And by the way, this happens to me all the time. I'm telling you, it's not like I'm, I'm, I'm perfect. I'm learning this. And this stuff has been life transformational for me in the last few years. What happens if you stub your toe and instead of get angry at the box, you go into gratitude? Okay, I'm thankful for which that we have a box that has stuff in it. <laughs> right? Think about that for a moment. Challenge yourself and immediately go into a state of gratitude. Because the Lilliputians, they'll come with one person, then they'll come with another one, then another one, if you keep stacking them up. Or if you come with gratitude, it crushes the Lilliputians. So gratitude is the highest form of energy. So uh, I would recommend making it a habit that every day you wake up and start your day for everything you're grateful. And I, I have a gratitude journal that I start off in the morning, and it's kind of funny some of the things I'll write in there. You know, it's, I'm grateful for adversity, right? How weird is that? Why would I be grateful for adversity? You know, without it, if God didn't challenge me, I wouldn't have an opportunity to grow. I'd be the same person now that I was five years ago. I don't want that. I want to be a different, better person. I want to be a better father. I want to be a better uh, uh, husband. I want to be a you know, better co-worker. So <coughs> thanks, to, uh, thanks to Jesus for providing us with the manual that we have. Thank you for his, his grace. Thanks to all of that, we can control the weasels and the little putians. And overall, just enjoy a better life on this world. <laughs> it has told me I'm done. <laughs> and that's all I have to say about that. <laughs> thank you. Any questions? Good. Yeah. Well, thank you thank for the you. opportunity, Paul. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. I appreciate you doing it. Yeah. We pray real quick. Yeah, absolutely. Prayer? All right. Uh, Heavenly Father, um, we don't understand a lot of things. Uh, th that's why you're here. We, I guess, you know, we always seek to understand, but we don't, we don't necessarily have to, as long as we understand your love and your grace. And Lord, I, I pray that there are a lot of people out there that, that don't understand that. There are a lot of people out there that put these negative thoughts in their minds and just let them control them, and they don't feel like they have control over anything, which, you know, the realization we don't need control over everything. That's what you're here. You're in control. We, we need to surrender that to you, Lord, and look to gratitude. And always know that you're constant, you're the Alpha, the Omega, you're always there, the beginning, the end, you're there for us at all times. Lord, I pray for those people that are struggling. I pray for those people that, uh, Lord, with the anxiety and depression, knowing that the tools that they need are not in the pill bottle, they're in the scripture. They're in your love. They're in the Holy Spirit. And we ask them to seek that. And Lord, we ask that uh, this message just touch our hearts and our minds and, and get, our, get us thinking the way you'd want us to think. In your precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, my brother. Thank you, sir. Enjoyed it. Appreciate it. Appreciate his insight. I'm, we're going to stay on Facebook Live. I want to do, I wasn't going to do this live, but um, I want to share with you uh, our budget uh, for the next year. Uh, one of the things we want to be as a church is very transparent in how we uh, deal with our money. I'm afraid that many times... Uh, Churches uh, can get wrapped up in money, right? And so we want to be very transparent. So we have uh, put together a, a budget. We'll go through it quickly. If you have any questions, you can ask me later. Uh, it's a very simple budget. I would just let you know I checked our bank account this morning, and we have between our savings and our general fund, we have a, almost uh, $6,000 in the bank. Uh, and so we don't, we, uh, in relationship to uh, some churches, that's not very much, but we don't have much expense. So uh, we've got a, uh, I should keep a copy. Oh, here. Well, I'll just show it up here. Fl uh, flip the first screen there. I'll just go through this quickly. And again, we've shared this with our online people because I know there uh, may be some that support us a little bit online. I have no idea who gives what. And, uh, but. Uh, what do you think of? 
I'm trying. I'm You're trying. trying. Okay. Here. Uh, we basically have a, uh, 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 based on a, on an income of, uh, of $4,000 a month. That's what we did last year. That was our budget for last year. Uh, and as you know, budgets are just simply a guideline. Um, we've invited that we've, uh, are we not good? Okay. Well, well, it's for those of you here. It's on the it's on the sheet here. Uh, the, the general fund income. We look at four thousand dollars. We have a an administrative area that we uh, set as a budget of four hundred a month. We don't spend anywhere near that. Uh, uh, we do uh, have some requirements there. Some uh, dues we play pay for our office three sixty five and our music um, platform. Our music, uh, CCLI, which is the license we pay uh, annually to use our music paper. Uh, there's a thing there called staff training. We've never trained a staff in anything, but it's there. And uh, uh, and then we have a technology a section there of two hundred dollars. How are we doing there? It's there. I just can't get it to show up on that. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, and then. Uh, Okay. Uh, anyway, and then we have a, a ministry uh, uh, expense. We have designated about five fifty bucks a month uh, for any small group income or expense, children's or youth or worship. Uh, we don't spend a lot on any of that, um, uh, but it's it's there. And then uh, outreach. This includes our uh, our monthly. Uh, Blessing bags. blessing bags yes and any other outreach we gave we gave out a lot of money this last year to uh the philippines uh we gave some to the the women's crisis center in uh hillsboro we gave some to the new life clinic here in town we gave money to uh um samaritan's purse uh and so we and we're always looking for um other outreach um to uh, to do so, if you know things that you know, I know the the uh, the one in Hillsboro was the one Jane had brought to our attention, uh, and then we have our uh, our expense for the building. We spend basically two hundred bucks a month for this room, uh, which you uh, you you can't beat, right? And so, and they provide for us, uh, and then there's a salary part. This is always the part that uh, I'm always I'm not comfortable with, but anyway, it's there and. We've I've added a little raise. Uh, I've never taken any kind of a raise, and then I, I took a little raise there, and also for Kim, gave her a little raise. She does a, a tremendous job, um, and then uh, miscellaneous to 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 add it at, to add it up to sixty bucks to four thousand dollars. So that's our budget for the year. Um, did we ever determine what we actually our income for last year? Yeah, for a I month sent, i sent that to you oh you did yeah. was it in an email could you tell me what it was not off the top of my head okay i think kim needs a bigger ring <laughs> no yeah <laughs> she does a great job by the way and, uh, and bobby does too by the way she, bobby an expense we had this year bobby designed our website and we paid her five hundred dollars uh to to design our website uh she uh she wanted she only wanted 300 but we negotiated it up to 500 and uh if you've looked at the website she's uh she did a really good job so that's our budget if there's any you have any questions or you can talk to me later um again we uh i don't like talking about money as a church uh but it is we do have expenses and i appreciate all of your uh, generosity um, and uh, and God has has blessed us and uh, I'm I'm excited about that and hopefully we will be uh, giving more and more money away to uh, to various outreaches and like I said um, let us know Michelle is my outreach coordinator she has a passion for outreach and uh, she'll call me and say what about this or how can we do uh, you know how can, can we do this and and of course we try to always say yes and uh, oh we gave the staff 
uh, $200 in gift cards here last week. So these are things we're trying to do and, and try to be uh, uh, generous. And this is God's money. And uh, we want to be we want to be good stewards. So any uh, questions or anything, you can either ask them now or you can talk to me later. Uh, and uh, anyway, it's exciting. So. All right. What are we going to sing next? I'm gonna... Away in a manger. Away in a manger. And then we'll end up with the chorus of Okay, away in a manger. Let's stand up and, and uh, get a circle because then you can look at each other's <laughs> lovely faces. And. Uh... Away in a manger, no crib for a bed. The little Lord. Jesus lay down his sweet head. The stars in the sky looked down where he lay. The little Lord Jesus asleep on the hay. The cattle are lowing, the baby awakes. But little Lord Jesus, no crying. He makes, I love the Lord Jesus, look down from the sky, and stay by my cradle till morning is nigh. Hear me, Lord Jesus, I ask thee to stay close by me forever and love me, I pray. Bless all the dear children in thy tender care, and take us to heaven to live with thee there. Go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. Okay. All right. Are we still on? Okay, good. It's. Uh, I want to just uh, thank you online for uh, watching us. Again, I appreciate so much what Dan had to say. Uh, and uh, uh, Jesus is the answer. It just is. And uh, following him, it's... Uh, it's not about a bunch of rules and regulations and stipulations and all of this. It's about a life of a commitment. So I really appreciate that. And like he said, uh, we may we may never know why things happen. And when we get to heaven, I don't think we'll care. So anyway, uh, let us close in prayer. I always love having uh, my friend Kenny Wells close in prayer. And I'll ask Kenny to, to lead us in prayer. Dear God, we thank you for your goodness, your mercy, and grace. Help us keep these in our heads and lives. We thank you for your son, Jesus, who died in that cross for our sins. Amen. Be with us as we leave here. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 And we will see you next week.